is BBC One Scotland. Tonight's sign zone will now be shown at a later date as we join BBC News 24 now through the night. Is still trying to uh, contact or make sure that the uh, next of kin of the prisoner of war concerned um, has been fully apprised of what's happened. Is it expected, though, uh, in, uh, at the Pentagon that it will be one of the seven um, American prisoners of war that uh, we knew about previously? Well, I think all the indications we're getting is that actually it's not. It's that it, it's possibly someone who was, who was mi listed previously as missing rather than one of the, one of the uh, prisoners of war that, uh, that had been notified. But this will be a great boost, supposedly, to morale. Uh, in, indeed, it's, uh, and I think that's one of the reasons why they, they've made this statement now. But of course, uh, it is only one individual amongst uh, a number who are a, a prisoners of war and B missing. Nick, um, thank you very much. And we'll try to um, get more um, details of that when we can, and we'll come back to you as soon as possible. Nick, thank you very much. Well, uh, as we've heard, the American Secretary of State, Colin Powell, has arrived in Turkey to try to restore relations, stretched almost to breaking point by America's decision to invade Iraq. In a busy schedule, he'll be taking in Ankara, the Balkans and Brussels. David Sells has this report. So far, the story has been war-war, built on a disrupted NATO and a divided Europe, on a transatlantic slanging match where once there was amity. I cannot go to the public and say, oh, well, let's go to war because there are reasons and so on, and I don't believe in that. The center of gravity is shifting in Europe. Uh, I was thinking of NATO when I said, oh, Europe. Britain said yes to Mr. Bush's war. France and Germany gave it the thumbs down. Now, at last, with Colin Powell coming to Europe, there is a chance to think together of the future. We are seeing the, uh, the need to have diplomacy Diplomacy can't substitute for force when force has been embarked upon, but it is necessary to have it there to pick up the pieces afterwards and to move ahead in a more united fashion than we were in when we moved into this. Powell's first port of call will be Turkey. For the Americans, almost the most damaging and unexpected casualty of this war has been their fallout with Ankara. Turkey's parliament, reflecting public opinion, refused to sanction American troops using the country as a base to invade northern Iraq. Will Colin Powell seek to repair relations, or does he carry a whip, will he be saying? Turkish troops must not move into Iraq to face the Kurds there. The Turkish military has always been paranoid about its own Kurdish minority, and how freedom for Iraq's Kurds could affect them. Vast convoys of troop-carrying trucks have crossed the Turkish border into northern Iraq. Many of 50, this was six years ago. The Turkish army swept across the border to tackle PKK guerrillas who'd fled southeastern Turkey and regrouped there. A repeat performance to keep Iraq's Kurds at bay this time is the current American fear. The occupation by Iraq's Kurds fighting alongside American special forces of the town of Chamchamal on the high road to Kirkuk will be certain to alarm the Turks. Today, Kurds were already clearing mines from the road to Kirkuk. If the Americans ask us for support or help, we will be proud to help them and we will cooperate with them. The Turks, of course, are not the only nation to have been upset by the US administration. So Brussels will be Colin Powell's main port of call after Ankara. You're thinking of Europe as Germany and France. I don't. I think that's old Europe. If you look at, at the entire NATO Europe today, the center of gravity is shifting to the east. And there are a lot of new members. And, and if you just take the list of all the members of NATO and all of those who've been invited in recently. What is it, 26, something like that? You're right. Uh, Germany has uh, been a problem, and France has been a problem. But, but just a minute, just a minute. But, but you look at vast numbers of other countries in Europe. They're not with France and Germany on this. They're with the United States. 
Powell, I was assured by a British insider, will be meeting all NATO and EU foreign ministers there. And old Europe's agenda will be to bring the United Nations into Iraq immediately post-war. We shouldn't get ourselves into a position where we say UN good, UN bad in a sort of a blind way. What we have to talk about is what ca is the UN good at doing? What can it do better than each of us can do separately? If so, Europe would applaud. Who, though, will be deciding for the Americans when the conflict is over? The neoconservatives, the Cheneys, Rumsfeld, Pearls and Wolfowitzes, who have powered this assault on Iraq in the first place, or more diplomatic voices in the administration. Colin Powell himself springs to mind, though these days his hands seem tied. The choice could be crucial for the future of Iraq, for its politics, its reconstruction, and for its economy, above all, for the control of its oil. And in what role could the United Nations eventually be invited on board? Questions, questions. The war continues, but it will only be as good as the solutions it generates. David Sells. Well, as the number of civilian casualties in the conflict mounts, it's creating a rising tide of anger throughout the Middle East. The war has led to calls for increased Arab unity, but as Ben Gagan reports from Cairo, that objective will be difficult to achieve. From the streets of the Arab world, a message is being sent out to the West, that the war on Iraq is being seen as an assault on an entire culture, and that Arabs are going to come together and fight back. This is Cairo, where the government once led the pan-Arab movement. These protesters are hoping for a revival. Thank you very, very much, America. Thank you very much, Britain. You are waking all of us up. We have been sleeping for 100 years, and now we are, you are waking all of the people up. All those people, not only Islamic uh, regime, but they are ordinary people. Thank you very much. You are waking us up and you are making them the very big benefit to us. Thank you very much. Please, more war, because more war means more waking up and more weakness, and we are going to, be, to show you. The cry for unity has often marked the turning points in this region, when the Arab world fought against the domination of the Ottomans, then the Europeans, and in its confrontations with Israel. So far, the dream has never become reality, but the way this war is being perceived may change all that. It is a war against all Arabs. Uh, and the United States failed completely, and the UK, to give the Arab belief that they are going against one wrong man and one wrong regime who even made crimes against the Arabs. Actually, because of the linkage September 11th events, because of the pronouncement coming from parts of the American administration, because of the very close association uh, of the U.S. and Israel, this war looks like uh, uh, it's against all Arabs. Viewers in this region saw the last Gulf War through the filter of American television or their own government censors. But the handful of satellite channels which have sprung up since then are providing a single Arabic perspective. The pictures are often explicit, the commentary is never sympathetic to the West. And all of this has a big effect on public opinion. This television, new television stations uh, are now giving um, some kind of support of uh, the Arab nationalism and uh, how Islam is good for them. Uh, they think there, is, uh, there are dangers that are coming after this war and these channels, uh, they are giving, um, giving support of these ideas. The sourness towards the U.S. means they're having to take special measures at some of the more obvious targets. Life on the American University campus is also far from normal, and not just because of the extra security. Inside, the students have been holding rallies against the country that's sponsoring their education. Egypt is the biggest recipient of American aid after Israel, but here they think the time has come for the Arab world to fend for itself. We are Arabs and we 
have things that the United States want from us. Of course, we need aid and so on. But if we look at our country, we can develop it and we can we can stand like like humans that we can do something. We can unite together. The U.S. aid or any of the extra aid or not, we we're in need for it and everything. But if it's the price of lives getting lost, then no, we don't need it. We'll suffer and we'll. We can do it on our own at some point. If we're left on our own and we try to stand up, maybe there is a chance. As a sign of how this war is shaping Arabic opinion, the sentiments in a westernized university are beginning to sound the same as those in the mosques. The Islamists are pushing hardest for a nationalist revival and are calling for a jihad against the West. We are going to a nationalist with Islam in Egypt and in Saudi Arabia, in Syria, even in Iraq itself. We are facing many troubles about Islamic theory, Islamic ideology, but I can uh, say that uh, the only way for the people here to build their own revival, their own development, is to uh, follow an Islamic ideology. A radical Islamic revival is what the government fears the most. Yesterday, the Egyptian president, Hosni Mubarak, warned that the war is going to lead to terrorism throughout the world, and that if there's one bin Laden now, there'll be a hundred afterwards. Why anyone should worry about the revival of Arab nationalism, this is one, that's a positive phenomenon. Do you think it's going to happen? But uh, uh, I think uh, the main concern now is uh, that this war, as any other war, could unleash more violence, more terrorism, and all of us are vulnerable. And this has been our message throughout the crisis and before the war started. The war is being fought in order to change the landscape of a single country. But the Americans and British may find they've unleashed forces throughout the region which they are unable to control.